Hello, my name is PJ Appleton and welcome to the third Equiem Audio Interviews episode. This week it was my absolute pleasure to catch up with Linda Isaacson, Managing Director and Global Head of Innovation and Technology at Ferguson Partners. Linda has also won numerous accolades and awards as a pioneering woman in property and prop tech, while she's also a member of Equiem's advisory board too. As I'm sure you can imagine, that meant we covered a number of fascinating topics, from the tech-led transformation of property to the future of data and analytics, as well as diversity and female empowerment within the industry. I hope you enjoy the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this third Equiem Audio Interview episode. I'm delighted to be joined today by the Managing Director and Global Head of Innovation and Technology at Ferguson Partners, Linda Isaacson. Hello, Linda. Hi. Good morning. Good morning as well. Great to have you with us. Thanks very much for, for making time to see us. Thank you. Um, now, Linda, you're, uh, well, we're delighted you're across in London this week, but you, you normally uh, live and, and work in, in New York, if I'm not, not mistaken. Um, what are you uh, in London for this week? What are you up to? And... Uh, as a sort of uh, lighter question, have you been able to enjoy anything uh, of the London tourist scene as well? <laughs> um, great to be here. Uh, thank you so much, PJ. Um, what am I doing in London? Indeed, I do live in New York, but uh, Ferguson uh, ha- Ferguson Partners has a uh, practice, uh, a global practice, and we have an amazing team in London, and I've had the great fortune of spending uh, the week with my colleagues here in London, Fantastic. Um, meeting clients, and also we were here because we led a uh, roundtable focused on investing in digital infrastructure. Uh-huh. Okay. So. Did that go well? Fabulous. Brilliant. Okay, we'd like to hear that. <laughs> so, hey, lo- the last time I saw you was, it, well, I was in New York, actually, uh, when we met, and you had, I think you were maybe two days into this, into your, your new role at Ferguson and Partners. So, um, it was too early to ask how it was going then, but um, but tell, tell us a little bit about Ferguson and Partners. Tell us about uh, your role and what you're responsible for. Um so this is a new practice for Ferguson Partners, and um, Ferguson is a, um, a, an incredibly dynamic global uh, organization uh, which provides executive and board recruitment. We also have a leadership management consulting, compensation consulting, and other advisory services, uh, um, complementary services on the executive and retained search. Uh, we are primarily focused um to clients in the real estate infrastructure, Mm -hmm. hospitality, senior housing verticals. And uh, we have recently launched two new practices. One, uh, which I am leading as the Managing Director and Global Head of Innovation and Technology for Ferguson. And I have a great colleague who is also launching practice focused on CHRO and people, um, chief people offices Mm -hmm. and uh, throughout uh, throughout the world so very exciting yeah. um, and I love it <laughs> great okay we like to hear that um, so I think I think you know when I was looking at your role and and, and sort of um, looking at what you've been up to I think it's I think it's so fascinating because you are you know even your title uh, being you know has words innovation and technology in it but you're really coming to what's quite I guess a traditionally been viewed as quite a, quite a traditional industry the property and um, construction industries in particular and you're also helping them to try and embrace change and innovation and even disruption which can be quite a scary word now that's i guess that's that's an enormous challenge but as you said it's, it's also very exciting so what what kind of excites you most about the role and is it the sense of genuinely saying change come to the industry is that what's yeah. exciting um, I think everything that you articulated, PJ, um, the practice is very strategically focused on providing, um, you know, talent mapping, um, best in class talent to organizations as they think through their innovation and digital transformation mm-hmm. strategic roadmaps. I don't believe that there is any one company uh, that is not thinking in terms of innovation mm-hmm. and uh Um, I'm not going to say IT because that's really not uh, the focus of the practice, Mm -hmm. Um, but truly disruptive technologies, emerging uh, trends as they impact uh, the real estate sector. And um, the biggest challenge, I think, will be on the people side Mm -hmm. and the talent side Mm -hmm. um, of the practice. And that's the focus. So I'm I'm enormously um, grateful and very uh, proud that uh, Ferguson will be leading this uh, mandate globally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 
uh, just leading on from that, a, a few weeks ago, actually, it was on episode two, uh, we spoke to Enrico Faccioli, who's the CEO of, of a company called Guiana. He was talking about the importance when companies, when they're looking to embrace change, he was saying you have to start with a problem that the company is facing or a challenge that, that you need to overcome mm -hmm. rather than going along to a big conference, for example, and just sort of saying, oh, that technology looks interesting, that looks cool. Um, do you agree with that? Do you think you always have to start with a challenge that the company is facing? Is that the best place mm -hmm. to start? I think it's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. um, look, you're always going to encounter interesting technologies that may not have been in your purview or your, you know, your think tank, um, and they'll be interesting. And you, uh, you know, you might uh, um, just have, you know, an interest to further understand that technology or engage in it. But I think essentially, um, Enrico is right mm -hmm. um, to really focus on, you know, what are you trying to solve for? Is it to mitigate risk? Is it to increase operational efficiencies? Is it to grow revenue? Is it all of the above? Is it cyber? Is it, uh, um, you know, assessing risk in one's portfolio? All of these are areas where technology and in particular data mm -hmm. is a key driver and how to solve for those problems or those challenges, I think is a great place to start on the roadmap of, mm -hmm. um, you know, that strategic initiative. And is that, is that, would that be your sort of number one piece of advice when you're starting out? I guess it looks different with every company, right? When yeah. you're in the first meeting, yeah. but what, how do you normally approach uh, that conversation yeah. when you, yeah. when you meet with a company for the first time? Well, there, you know, some companies are more mature than uh -huh. others in yeah. their in their roadmap and how and, and have already identified the needs or the gaps or the mm -hmm. talent uh, that they would like to recruit for, um, or the advisory service uh, component that they'd like to uh, engage us for. Uh, that may just be uh, um, compensation uh, mm -hmm. analytics and benchmarking. Um, so that's really um, you know kind of much more straightforward. Uh, and then there's uh, other companies that we would do the mapping and the upfront uh, analysis, mm. um, you know, maybe even benchmarking against a best-in-class competitive landscape and then uh, embark on what the talent and the skill set of that team might look like. So it's it, there's no one fit. Yeah, that. sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I was reading, and I think bit of this comes back to the talent piece that you were talking about earlier, was, um, so I was reading the KPMG uh, Global PropTech survey, their conclusion, um, you know, fortunately enough, is that uh, real estate companies are increasingly embracing technology, which is good news. Um, so just reading stats here, they said 58% of respondents said their company has a digital strategy in place, that's up 6% from the previous two years. Uh, and then they also said 95% of real estate companies have someone responsible for leading digital transformation and innovation, whether that's full time or as part of another role I, I don't know but it's clear that there's from those stats at least there's kind of this aspiration you know within the industry to kind of embrace change or to aspire to change aspiration is kind of one thing <laughs> um, adoption and success execution in <laughs> execution exactly it's something entirely different uh -huh. um, are you I guess encouraged by the actual rate of adoption and the actual sort of embedding process of, of technology, if you like. Is that something that's mm -hmm. encouraged you? So first I'll say I'm not sure I agree that 90% of real estate companies um, have someone responsible for leading digital transformation mm -hmm. and innovation. I think many are thinking about it, and I think innovation to one company is entirely different than innovation mm -hmm. to another. So Yeah, hard to define, um, I guess. I think many companies are tactically um, thinking about their data assets, how to monetize them, how to digitize them. So yes, I mean, I think just in the general context, maybe the KPMG, you know, stats or metrics are in general terms, pointing to the growth or the mandate of our industry to focus on these imperatives. Mm -hmm. um, and um, to your point of where, you know, where to kind of start the road, I think it's, um, and look, I'm a big believer that it's a uh, that uh, talent is one of the most, if not the most, critical driver in mm -hmm. that whole journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was going to ask you what what do you think a successful digital yeah. strategy looks like? Is it actually having someone who really knows uh, what that looks like internally in a company? Yeah. Is it yeah. is it bringing yeah. the right talent on board? Do you think? So I think it's both internal and external. Uh -huh. um, look, I mean, just the pace of acceleration in the industry, um, you know, is challenging all of us to look at emerging technologies that are coming from the outside in. Mm -hmm. So the role of someone who's leading a 
digital transformation or, or a data strategy? You know, is it uh, internal data assets? Is it a compilation of multidisciplinary aggregation of other, uh, you know, uh, assets? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a combination. Uh, without being too technical, I think, um, you know, my perspective is it's really someone who can, um, you know, translate the language of the, the, the technical piece and the business piece. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's, it's not an easy, it's not a, it's not a data scientist, right? Mm -hmm. Those roles, we can, we know the skill set, we can identify them and people can go out and, and get those folks on their team, even though those, those are challenging roles mm -hmm. to fill. But I think the more challenging roles are those roles that, um, you know, success really mandates having someone who can translate the business challenge to the uh, transformation of the digital challenge, aligning that process of thinking through that, that strategic piece. Yeah, you know, that's, that's so interesting because yeah. uh, I remember about a year My ago. My perspective. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think many would agree. Um, you know, a year ago we had we read a piece that was all about the need for technology and property companies to kind of, yeah. well, technology companies to speak the language of property companies because there seems to be sometimes this disconnect between the two in terms of how they communicate. I think that's so yeah. so fascinating. Um, so uh, just moving on. So one uh, one business we're also delighted that you advise is Equiums. Um, so for those uh, listening um, and who don't know, Linda joined the Equium Advisory Board back in March alongside Anthony Slumbers. Um, how did that relationship start? How did you come yeah. across Equium? And what excites you about being on the advisory board? Hopefully it does excite you. Oh, I love it. Um, so how did that start? Firstly, I have the uh, great privilege of sitting on a CRE Tech Global board. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe through my uh, relationships uh, for, of members on that board, they uh, introduced me to, um, I think I even came across the technology um, quite some time uh, ago, um, maybe before, as you guys were kind of starting your uh entree into the United States. Mm -hmm. I had the great fortune of meeting Gab McMillan, uh, the CEO of Equium, and um, was always interested in this tech-enabled uh, uh, platform to drive tenant engagement, and I was very curious about the data that kind of powered up some of that, uh, you know, the, the, the tool, the technology piece, the tool itself. So I think that was my interest, and I um, had many conversations uh, with Gab along uh, along the way, and um, I was delighted that she ultimately appointed me as an advisor. Really, I think focusing on the data piece of the platform. Yeah, so I was, I was, I was going to say, you, you know, one, yeah, one of the key areas you're advising on so is this kind of Equium Analytics, which um, for those who don't know, is our, it's our sort of ten analytics feature, which monitors activity on the platform and then provides landlords with um, actionable intelligence, really, to help them change their uh, their tenant engagement or asset management strategies. Um, I think that's you know, that's that's one area of kind of data and analytics that's really impacting real estate is improving the, the end product. Um, what other roles is data playing in, in in the commercial property industry? What what types of solutions uh, can it and is it providing to challenges the industry faces? Oh, PJ is powering up everything. Yeah. It is fundamental to everything uh -huh. uh, from investments to risk to assessing. Uh, uh, portfolios, uh, real-time trend analytics, algorithms of investment, crowdsourcing, uh, debt, equity plays. I mean, it just is enormous. And uh, and uh, my my opinion, um, although I'll see as we kind of uh, move further in the practice, is that there are likely so many of our clients that are sitting on enormous data assets that we don't even really quite understand the uh, wealth of some of their own uh, internal data assets. So just fundamentally uh, and internally, there's just huge opportunity for those companies to assess the strategic value of their own data and the insights that they can get from their own data. So uh, that, that's really interesting because if that's the case, it's sort of, I don't know, speaking again to Enrico, he was saying really at the start of people embracing data and people are sometimes a bit scared of the word data and analytics and don't quite know, um, you know how to, how to utilise it. So given the vast potential of data, what, what holds some businesses back, do you think, in your experience? Um, and then I guess on the positive side, what's going to drive greater adoption? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I believe the talent. I'm, I'm back at the okay. talent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a training, an academic training in, uh, in data, advanced data. Um, and um, I think that, uh, you know, we, we sometimes use these words in the industry interchangeably, machine learning and AI and all sorts of things. And fundamentally, do we really have the skill set to understand what that means and what the... Um, what the outcome is of you know investing in these technologies um, again I think it comes back to the skill set of the people and the human capital that will drive these initiatives final piece which I'm really excited about um, and I know that's a, that's a big passion of yours as well is kind of empowering more female leaders within real estate construction and prop tech um, could you maybe tell us a little bit about how you got into the industry um, and how you kind of got to where you are today mm -hmm. Um, so obviously the diversity perspective is enormously uh, important um, and I mean diversity across all sectors PJ I yeah. think diversity um, you know for um, all projects all initiatives uh, how I got into the real estate sector was I actually was uh, I had the great fortune of being sponsored by a very senior real estate practitioner in New York City who um, kind of guided me into the industry, if you will. Um, I will say that having a sponsor um, in my particular case was more valuable than having a mentor. Mm -hmm. um, Can you explain the difference as well? Yeah, so, so a sponsor is someone who will strategically, literally sponsor you in a project. Mm -hmm. Um, whether it's capital, whether it's, um, you know, uh, know-how, talent, uh, investment, versus a mentor where it's sort of a mentor-mentee relationship. Um, both highly valuable and strategic. Um, I think the sponsorship piece is a, uh, an accelerant, um, at, at least it was in my career. Um, also, uh, in my prior role at a Fortune 500 company, I was one of the founding members of a Women in Leadership initiative, mm -hmm. um, and they have won accolades uh, for, I think, several years in a row as being the best places to work for women in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, Ferguson uh, Partners also has a incredibly... Um, focused, uh, amazing group of, uh, um, you know, practitioners who focus on diversity and uh, board uh, diversity. Um, the chairman of our company is very focused on that, and I think Fantastic. it also starts from the top. Sure. And, uh, you know, um, and of course, uh, you know, um, there's a number of organizations, global organizations, where when we speak of diversity, it's, um, it's, it, you can't just speak about it and and not uh, and not execute on it. So um, I'm incredibly fortunate that uh, that I've always kind of really had the opportunity to um, you know to grow in both a public company and a privately held company that both value diversity so much. Um, and without wishing to to embarrass you as well, for those who don't know, you, you've won numerous awards uh, in terms of, well in this particular area so just reading out a few connect media's uh, annual women in real estate award uh socal's top woman in real estate award um real estate new york's woman of influence award loads actually the list goes on i've only mentioned a few there but you're also on the advisory board of women in prop tech i know you're sort of heavily involved in um in what they're doing as well um in advising them um historically it's well known the real estate industry has not been mm -hmm. straightforward for women to, I guess, enter into, but also progress through. Um, what advice do you do you give, and would you give to women who are thinking about a career in property, mm -hmm. um, or who are perhaps coming up against sort of mm -hmm. uh, ceiling mm -hmm. in property? So, um, PJ, as you know, I also chair ULI's Global Council, yeah. and uh, we have 73 members on our council, uh, comprised of some of the most esteemed and highly respected uh, real estate investors and mm -hmm. practitioners globally. And uh, we have less than, uh, I think, I think we have 11 women globally on that. Mm -hmm. So how do you approach that? You, we have to recruit both the men and the women on our council uh, to bring in uh you know, um, qualified women, of which there are mm -hmm. many globally, mm -hmm. we have to actively recruit, invite them to our meetings, um, you know, have them come as our guests, have them meet us, have them meet uh, each other. Uh, when I started, uh, we had less than 11. So I know it sounds such a low number, but mm -hmm. it's incrementally in increasing. It's not, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. So bottom line, um, it's an active uh, uh, 
pursuit that we all have to engage in. It's just not going to happen by saying we need more women in this. Mm -hmm. So for our next meeting in Toronto, I am literally, uh, you know, encouraging meeting with incredibly um, qualified global women real estate leaders to come as my guests to the mm -hmm. meeting in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go from there, right? Fantastic. Yeah. That's so great. I was, I was thinking as well, there's, there seems to be in the last few years more and more kind of um, resources, I guess, as well. So Women in Procto, fantastic mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. um, definitely check them out if you're listening and, and want to know more. But um, just the wealth of talent right. um, that's coming through uh, women entering the industry who right. are so capable yeah. Um, and I guess it's 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 a bit of well, it's two things, isn't it? It's one the kind of the talent actually entering the market, and also people giving them opportunities as yeah. you had as well. Um, oh, thanks for mentioning women in prop tech. Um, uh, obviously, um, I know uh, the leadership and uh, have been asked to be uh, on their advisory board as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, one of the things I did in London was I had the, the great fortune to meet uh, some of the uh, leaders of women in mm -hmm. prop tech. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, it's global. Innovation and technology is not agnostic to geography, and we need to think globally, and we need to interact globally, and uh, the diversity part is, uh, is also global. So... Awesome. So I think I, you, you sort of already touched on this, I think. Um, but are you, are you, there's still such a long way to go, and you can see that even going on to most conferences. But are you sort of encouraged by um, growing sort of diversity in the industry? Are we still really a long way back from where we need to be? What's your sort of thoughts mm. on that? I think all of the above. We have a lot of uh, exceptionally talented uh, um, women and minorities mm -hmm. in the industry. Um, you know, I've moderated and been on panels myself where we've been all women, so we blew our own uh, mandate for being a diverse panel. That's not right either. Mm -hmm. Diverse uh, Diversity of talent um, has an exponential and empirical return on diversity of thinking. Mm -hmm. So, um, you like know, <laughs> yeah, yes, it's been proven. It's true. I mean, I don't know where the stat comes from, but uh, there have been numerous studies that show there is a link between uh, diversity of talent talent in diversity of thinking. Linda, thank you so much. It's genuinely been fascinating talking to you. Um, and so, yeah, I really appreciate you carving out this time um, and giving it to us. So yeah. thank you very much for joining So us. awesome, PJ. Amazing. And good luck with the platform. You, thank you. You are a great, great <laughs> team. I'm so proud to know all of you. Thank you so much. So um, if you're listening and you've enjoyed uh, this Equium audio interview, I'm sure, I have, uh, no doubt, that you'll enjoy our first two episodes as well. It was with Anthony Slumbers and Enrico Faccioli. So you can check out all three episodes now which is on our blog uh, at www.getequiem.com and uh, we will see you again next time on Equiem Audio Interviews.